Hello, and welcome to the Z-Hut. Today, I'd like to show you how you can use a PIR sensor, motion sensor, to control a relay. Now, this project is actually pretty simple to hook up. It doesn't take very many components, and uh, there are lots of applications for this, lots of different things you could control. Now, before we get started, a little disclaimer. If you're going to be using this relay to control something with higher voltage, like 110 or 220, build this project at your own risk. Um, we will not be responsible if you electrocute yourself or burn your house down or blow something up. So build at your own risk. Now with that, um, it is a pretty easy project, like I said, and it is fairly safe. Um, it's when you start dealing with using 110 with these relays, if you really don't know what you're doing, I wouldn't really recommend playing with it because 110 can kill you. But if you're going to use this relay to activate like a string of 12 volt LED lights, you're going to be completely fine. And um, I think the worst you could do is pop a capacitor if you hooked it up wrong. <laughs> And that's just going to give you a headache and, well, you might get something in your eyes, but it ain't going to kill you. But like I said, build at your own risk. So um, what we have here is we got the PIR sensor and we've got the relay and then we've got some components here. So first let me just demonstrate it working quick and then we'll go over what uh, components we have here and how to set this up. So if I put my hand in front of it. I'm hoping it shows up on the camera, but there's a little LED right here on the relay. I don't know if you can hear it clicking on or off. There it goes again because I have my hand up there by it. Now, um, on the PIR sensor itself, let me trigger it again, there are two potentiometers. Now, I've got both of these set to the minimum right now. And because I got it pointed at me, it's going to keep going off and on. Once I put it away, point it away from me, it'll quit doing that. But like I said, I have them both set to the absolute minimum. Now what these are is one of them, if I remember, it's the first one here, sets the duration that it stays on once it's triggered. Now if I'm wrong and it's this one, just play with the two, you'll figure it out real quick. But I do believe the duration is the first one. Then the second one here... What this one controls is um, how long between times it will trigger again. So if it triggered and shut off, this one will set for how long it will take before you can actually trigger it again. Um, there's another little jumper here. I guess I've never really looked up what that does. There's an H and an L on it, high and low. So I don't know. That might just be... Um, for the uh, how much movement it takes for it to go off because there is no setting on here for how much movement it takes so I'm guessing maybe that's what it's for if I'm wrong or if you know what it is leave a comment below um, I just guess I haven't really looked it up now there is a lot of these sensors available on like eBay and Amazon and they're all pretty similar so if you're using one that has the two potentiometers it might look slightly different than this but um, it will work pretty much the same. Now we're powering this with 5 volts. And the way this one is set up is this first pin here is VCC in. The middle one is your output pin, the trigger pin. And then the third and final one here is your ground. Now to power it, I'm using 5 volts. Now I actually have 9 volts running in. So what I am using is one of these little items right here and this is a L7805 5 volt voltage regulator so it takes the 5 volts or excuse me it takes the 9 volts I'm powering it with and you can power this all the way up it's like 14 or 15 volts you can put into it and it cuts it down to 5 and if I remember the minimum was like 6.5 or 7 volts if you go below that it uh, won't actually put out 5 it'll be slightly less and the less the voltage you put to it under that six and a half or seven, the less voltage you will get out. If you put five to this, you're probably only going to be getting like three and a half to four 
volts out of it. And then I've got two little capacitors here, and these are connected with the voltage regulator. And that's just to help stabilize it uh, so it works correctly. If you'd like more info on why those are there, just look up a tutorial. There's tons of them on the uh, the L7805s on YouTube here. Now, next, of course, we've got our relay. And I'm using a relay board, and this is activated by 5 volts, but you can run 110 through it. And this one's rated 10 amps at uh, 125 volts AC. So you could run, you know, a light bulb off of it. You wouldn't have any problem. Um, you're not going to want to try to run like a coffee pot or a microwave. Definitely not off of this. But um, especially if you're using the little CLFs or that LED light bulbs, you could uh, run them off this easily. Your big floodlights might be drawn a little too much. Um you'll have to look at the bulb that you'd be using if you're using this to activate a floodlight and make sure that it's not drawn more than 10 amps. And if it is, you just need to use a bigger relay board. Now the reason I use these relay boards is because it has an optical, a uh, opt optocoupler or optical, um, oh, there's another name for them, um, optical interface or whatever it is. What it does is it allows for you to turn the relay off and on without having a physical connection between the input for turning it on because otherwise when this activates a magnetic field forms now when you turn the power off the field collapses and it generates a high voltage spike now by using the optocoupler here it does not allow that voltage spike to flow back into our project so if you're using just a standalone relay, you would probably want to add one of these optocouplers or optoisolators. That's the other name. And there is another way to do it using diodes. Um, but these little boards, these are under $2. So if you're going to do this project, I would recommend just using one of these. Everything's already set up, put together. It just simplifies things big time. All right, uh, well, the next, what we have is the PIR sensor's output. Now, it runs on 5 volts. This Well, this model does, and most of them I've seen on eBay and Amazon do. But the output, the pin out, the trigger, is only 3.3 volts. So what I've done, it's kind of buried in here, but there's a little 2N2222 transistor. And I have this little yellow wire, which is the output, connected through a uh, current limiting resistor to the base and that was used I think it's a 120 or a 220 either should work um, anywhere between 120 220 because even at the 3.3 volts it's still a little more than the base of a 2N2222 transistor can handle so you want to put a little resistor in there and then I have both the powers on the, the module connected directly to VCC plus and of course because this is an NPN transistor what we're doing is using the transistor to connect the ground so when this is activated or just activated uh, the transistor base saturates and allows current to flow through to ground which activates the ground on the relay and triggers the relay to come on now, that's pretty much all there is to this little circuit. And there's tons of things you can control with this. Like I said, you could try and control outdoor light. And you can actually buy those outdoor floodlights that are set up using the same thing. They use these PIR sensors. But uh, you could also do, you know, like a string of LEDs. Or you could have uh, an alarm. Um, I've actually got an old car alarm that's 12 volts. And you could use this relay to turn that on so when it's triggered the alarm would go off and let you know hey somebody's walking around out there where you got the sensor pointed so um yeah that's all there really is to the circuit um now the schematic um i will knock one up real quick here and uh if you look in the description below you'll find a link to my website and it'll bring you right to this project's page and i will have a schematic on there on how to set this all up and i also have a parts list on there so you know 
what parts to use, but um, you can swap a few things, like the, the capacitors right here aren't super critical. I think I got one microfarads hooked up, but you could go a little more, a little less, and you're going to be fine. If you don't have a 2N, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, you could use, what's the other one, a 2N, 3904, I think it is. And a, there's a whole lot of the small signal transistors. The only thing is just make sure that, you know, because this is 3.3 volts, make sure you put the correct resistor going to the base to limit the current so you're not frying out the transistor. Now, also depending what voltage you're running through this and how often it's turning on. You might want to put a small heat sink on here. Um, I don't think you're going to need a very big one. You're definitely not going to need a, a fan to cool it. I don't see the need for that, but I'm only running uh, 9 volts into it. If you were running 12 to 14, yeah, I would put a at least a small heat sink on there to help dissipate the heat. You're probably not going to generate a ton because the thing's not always on, but maybe you have it set. You know, once this goes off, this, um, when you adjust the uh, the two potentiometers on here, you can get this thing to stay on for well over a minute before it will shut back off. I guess I haven't tried the extreme, but I've turned it up a little and watched the clock, and it was about a minute, and it wasn't even turned all the way up. So you could probably get this thing to stay on for a couple of minutes. And then the time between triggerings, I'm not really too sure. Haven't really played with that. I got it set to the minimum right now. But uh, if you were setting this up outside, you'd probably want to turn that up a little bit. Maybe have like a minute between triggerings or five minutes or something. I'm sure it at least goes to five minutes. So, All right. Well, I can't think of really anything else to go over. Like I said, if you build this and you're using 110, do so at um, your own risk. I'm not responsible, but I just thought um, I'd do a video to show you how to do this, because yes, it is possible. And like I said, also all this uh, the schematic and parts list stuff, you uh, just look in the description below, and it'll bring you right to this project's webpage, uh, that link I'll have down there. And you can uh, print it out or just look at it on your computer to build it. All right. Well, with that, I guess um, I'd like to say thank you for joining us here at the Z Hut today. If you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. So I hope you have a great day. And remember, have fun building.